understand the principles of how ulcers can be managed clinically. Um, this video has been kind of fun or exciting for me or whatever, um, just because it hasn't taken me very long to prepare for at all. Um, and that's just because I did all the physiology and pathophysiology of their stomach and gastric ulcers um, in the other videos. So uh, the treatment seems quite self-evident or intuitive to me now, um, which is nice. So anyways, I'll get into it. Um, first I'll talk about antacids. Alright, so I'll go up. I want to try and do this quickly, so I've pre-made a bit of stuff. So, um, here we have the uh, do it in grey, stomach lumen. Lumen is the uh, mucosal barrier consisting of uh, the mucus and the epithelial cells in this case uh, specifically the mucus secreting cells yep and this red stuff is blood uh, um, we'll just pretend the interstitials in there and uh, there's nerves all through here so how do antacids work well so in the scenario that you have a uh, peptic ulcer you can imagine that the so here's me drawing our ulcer here um, getting into maybe into the blood um, definitely um, irritating the nerves and, and destroying the cells in this area causing pain so people take antacids um, so what are they um, they're a, a base with a chemical helper um, that increases the pH, so they're buffer. Um, so you know you have things like um, mylanta, which is aluminium hydroxide and magnesium um, hydroxide. So if you put in your mylanta in here, it has its uh, buffering reaction to increase the pH from say. Uh, two to three to you know more along the lines of three to four. So um that you know of course has its effect here as well. Um therefore uh, it's gonna uh not irritate or cause as much pain, decrease pain. So it's really uh for antacids are for symptom relief. Symptom relief. Cool. All right. Um, so now I'll talk about H. Pliori eradication. Cache on. That is not readable, but whatever. Um, so I talked about it in one of my other videos, but basically, um, H. Pliori is this rod shaped bacteria and it gets in and pretty much damages the uh, epithelial cells this red stuff can be damaging it damages it, reduces the mucus so you can see here there's not much blue stuff which is the mucus um, generally just isn't good so getting rid of them will allow the cells to so you know it stops them from proliferating a bit and destroys them so it'll allow them to give them a break from the bacteria and start to produce more acid more uh, mucus with its buffering qualities and we'll just give the body a chance to repair itself um, so that's really good uh, does that antibiotics won't go into how antibiotics work um, too much but uh, they usually use um, 
mock session, um, which is beta lactam, so that uh, breaks the cell walls, so it stops them from being able to replicate and that kind of stuff. Um, and they usually also use, um, yeah, at the same time they use another drug um, called Clathro. Pins a bit here. Clathromycin, um, and that interferes with um, protein synthesis in the bacteria. So get rid of it. Yep, um, and they also usually can bind with the protein pump inhibitors or acid pump. Um, inhibitors, I guess, just to decrease the amount of hydrochloric acid that's being produced and make it a easier environment for the cells to uh, regenerate. Um, so yeah, that's it for that. Those um, they sort of can see what kind of level they work at, um, and then now I'll talk about the um, H2 receptor. Agonists and uh, the protein pump inhibitors or acid pump inhibitors. So H2 receptor agonists, how do they work? Um, you might remember from one of my other videos that you have um, gastrin, uh, gastrin, acetylcholine, and Histamine, a square, and histamine can be a circle. Um, now, these are all involved in stimulating the production of gastric acid. And I apologise for the very noisy bird. Um, I won't tell him off because um, he's happy. So what was I saying? Oh, so H2 agonist. This receptor here is called a H2 uh, histamine receptor. So the H2 receptor agonist irreversibly, and not irreversibly, um, competitively, a competitive antagonist. So you can see that's one there. And they block up the sites. Uh, and so histamine can't have its effect. So normally histamine would through second messengers in um, Second messengers increase the cyclic AMP, and along with um, the increase of calcium, would serve to through through some mechanisms. I don't need would serve to uh, increase your protein kinases, which in turn upregulate and insert. The protein pump inhibitors. So here's our protein pump inhibitors. Yep, cool. So uh, I'll get a. This can be done in pink. So you cause that, you block that, block that, block that, and then you block that. Um, however, uh, because it's uh, only competitive, doesn't always block the receptor, it doesn't stop at 100% and you still have the effects of calcium coming in so you're not going to uh, it's not going to lead to a huge uh, decrease in HCL production so I'll just give it one arrow um, there's a stomach lumen now um, the protein pump inhibitors uh, PPI uh, how do they work? Um, so you ingest them and they get into your stomach. Yeah, yeah, we'll draw them there. But um, you have them in their inactive form, and then when they get into your parietal, and um, I mentioned that they're lipophilic, which means so they can cross the cross the barrier easily. Uh, so we'll draw it there as well. And crossing there, and and when they get in there, they um 
So again, they are drawing in a different color here uh, because they're now in the cell they can go into their active form. And now what they do is they strongly, so they covalently bond us to the protein pumps and irreversibly as well um, and completely stuff them up, stop them from working. So there you go, pretty simple stuff. And so obviously, you know, you ha you, t you have some of these, and it's going to decrease decrease your HCL production greatly. So uh, just just to remember that it's these cells that they secrete your uh, H plus uh, in return for K plus. So decrease if you decrease that if you decrease your H plus, you're going to decrease your uh, hydrochloric acid production greatly. Um, that's it. Um, surgery I'll talk about really quickly. Um, won't need much room. So, uh, there's the esophagus, greater curvature of the stomach, lesser curvature of the stomach, duodenum. Yeah, there we go, that'll do. Alright, so why do we have surgery? All right, um, so, if your ulcer is really bad and it's causing bleeding, you're going to bleed out, you need to stop it straight away. Um, so, you're going to you know, maybe resect here and here, and then uh, with something called clipping, or similar to suturing basically, you um bind or your stretch and you bind that together. Yep. Um, so you use surgery if you're bleeding badly, so hemorrhaging out. Um, another ster um, if there's obstruction. So this uh peptic ulcer I'll, I'll draw it in here. Um, yeah, it's obstructing the flow, your chimes all building up. So the surgeon is going to essentially cut into there and then cut that bit out and then, you know, clip or stitch or suture or um, suture it back together. I'll just draw that in there. Yeah. So it'll be a bit shorter, but it won't be obstructed. Um, another time. Um, if say your protein pumps and nothing else is really working to fix you, um, uh, then what they might do is they'll get in there and you know you remember that your parietal cells are mostly located around here in the antrum of the stomach, so they might they'll just get in and uh, and just scrape, get rid of some of those cells, scrape them away. So then there's literally there's there's less. Um, less cells secreting the acid, um, and that's gonna that's gonna do it for you. Um, so that's about it. A um, bit more, bit less formal than how I normally do them. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Uh, I mainly just I think it's all pretty self-evident once you learn the other stuff. So if if you watch the other videos and just have a think about it, it'll it should be quite quite clear um, how how they all work to um, combat or treat or manage um, manage the ulcers so yeah cheers and sorry about the noisy bird <laughs>